Okay, so this is Joseph Lebrec, and in this video I'm going to be just talking a little bit about the code signing process for the BlackBerry Playbook. Um, I've had a lot of problems with it that, um, you know, I've tried to document here and there. Most of it's just me ranting on Twitter about it. But, um, you know, I was able, able to actually sign all three of my apps today, and I was able to verify that these applications had been signed, and they're now under review uh, with RIM. So uh, this was the original post I made on my blog about the code signing process. And at the time I was working, uh, you know, quite heavily in my, my uh, what is it, Flash development for Android uh, cookbook. And because I was doing that, I didn't I was using a another version of a Flash Builder than the version that you can use with the BlackBerry Playbook uh, Tablet OS SDK, which is the version called Burrito. It's on Labs. Um, it was also given away at Max on on CD. Um, so I had you know another version of Flash Builder on my machine, and I needed it for you know uh, writing my book. So I you know, did not want to have to uninstall that and reinstall the i3 build just to get my BlackBerry stuff working every few weeks. And the way BlackBerry, uh, the way RIM's been doing this is, you know, they release a new version of the SDK every couple of weeks, every month or two, whatever it is. And uh, then they pull your apps from the market and they send you a message saying, oh, we want you to sign this with this new SDK. And it's like, well, okay, now I've got to go through and, you know, either install the new SDK standalone, which I've done, or you can always uninstall Flash Builder 4.5, reinstall Burrito, and, you know, overlay the SDK, which sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, all sorts of issues. So I just wanted to do it through the command line. So what I did is I just, um, you know, I, I did it through the command line. I thought I signed everything correctly. I got the, uh, you know, I, I registered through the RIM signing authority and so forth, got the CSJ file back. I was able to register it through the command line, and that's all outlined here, the steps to do that sort of stuff. But apparently when I actually signed the thing, I actually only signed it with my... Um, my P12 certificate, the the author certificate. I didn't sign it with the um, the RDK. So, um, you know, I've posted some updates here about you know how to go about signing it with the RDK. So that's the that's the certificate from the RIM signing authority. And unfortunately, um, that I had a quite a number of problems with. Um, I was receiving all these bar signer errors saying that. Um, you know, the file had been previously signed, which is really weird because, you know, it was rejected from RIM for being not signed. So, you know, that's just weird. Um, I was talking to some people on Twitter about it, and, you know, a number of suggestions were thrown out, one of them being that, um, you know, perhaps the tablet OS SDK only will be able to sign things if it's sort of like a you know, a full whole version number different than something you'd previously signed. So I tried that and basically when I tried it with version 2 I would get the bar signer error saying that it had been previously signed. When I tried it with version 3 um, in my application descriptor file I would get a manifest error saying that version 3 was actually invalid which is really interesting. So apparently uh, for app world you can't have something at version 3. So, you know, I kind of gave up on that yesterday, but this morning I wanted to try it some more. And, you know, at this point my, my book is written and so forth. So I actually installed uh, Burrito once again and was able to overlay the uh, Tablet OS SDK on there. And actually a trick for doing that, um, which I'll document here, uh, lots of times I would install the Tablet OS SDK and it just would not take. You know, you'd go in and you would not have the option for BlackBerry Playbook, only Android. So I think the trick to doing that is to not choose North American English when you install, to choose International English. Um, and I also, on Windows 7, uh, ran it as admin the first couple times that I, I set it up. So if you're having problems with that, 
I would suggest giving giving those options a try. Um, when signing my application as a release build, so project export release build, um, I would go through to this next step and here's where you can configure your certificate and so forth. I've enabled digital signing here and there's a signing preferences page where you can set this up. So there's two certificates. There's a developer certificate which you create and that's selected here and the important thing here is your company name must exactly match the RIM certificate company name. If it doesn't it's not going to work. So RIM certificate you have to first go to the RIM signing authority on the web you have to request a certificate. They mail you a CSJ file, and apparently um, that goes out at like 11 p.m. Uh, France time <laughs> every day. It's an automated thing. So it was about 3 o'clock Denver time, I believe, uh, Mountain Standard Time. So those should go out every day at about 3 o'clock MST. And basically what you do is you create the certificate you create and register a certificate so you have to point to the CSJ then you have to register it and it goes and it does like a handshake with the signing authority and then you're all set. Um, so you click enable digital signing. I also made sure to click include back Blackberry Playbook Tablet OS Libraries and Build Path just because Blackberry says to do that on their website. You can verify your package contents. Make sure you've got the Blackberry Tablet XML and the BlackBerry tablet icon. Uh, people have had stuff rejected for not having an icon as well. So make sure you have all this extra stuff in there as well as your normal application descriptor file or you're going to get denied. There shouldn't be any advanced packaging options you need to do. And basically you hit finish here. And I've had a number of problems with this because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. So you can see in my, where I was originally publishing it right here, it would create a bar for me, but it also creates a bar.sig. Uh, the problem with that is this bar.sig shouldn't exist. It only exists because there was a problem signing the bar. But of course it doesn't actually tell you that when it goes through and, and does this. So you can see right here, bingo. This is the one I just did, 12.09 p.m. You can see by my clock. And look at that. It's crap, it did it wrong. So if I go in here into like 7-zip and I open my archive, look in my meta in file, and you can see I don't have any of the signing portions here. It's not signed even though everything says that it is signed correctly. So let's delete that. I'm gonna go through again, project, export release build, hit next, and finish. And this is the thing, it seems like with all of these tools that, it, you know, it's hit or miss. It's so variable because you'll do it once and it'll work and you'll do it another time and it won't work. So check it out. Not working again. Oh, something else I did that was sort of important. If you go to properties and go to your flex compiler options here, um, it was also suggested by me to put a dash debug equals false in the compiler arguments. So I've made sure to do that on all of mine. I'm not sure if it made a difference or not, but it works sometimes. So project, export, release, build. Let's try it a third time. Hit next. And hit finish. And look at that, it's still not doing it. So what we may need to do, uh, one of the things that's advised is to always change the actual uh, build number. So let's go in and do that right now. So let's increment this to 10 to 1.0.21. Okay. And we'll try this again. And the, the most frustrating thing about this is that you can see it doesn't give you any sort of error messages whatsoever. I mean, you would think if you didn't know all this stuff that, you know, stuff signed at this point. Which a lot of people think and, you know, they're being turned down by BlackBerry. And, you know, really RIM needs to communicate this a little bit better. There we go. Perfect. 
So now if we look in here, you can see we don't have that SIG file. So let's open the archive, go to metainf, and bingo. So here's our, our personal author signing certs. So this is the .p12 file that creates these. And these are the RIM signing authority certs. So this is a fully signed uh, package here. Um, you could also do this through the compiler, but the command line compiler, but I had so many problems with that as I mentioned. Um, I figure just let the tooling do it for me. So even with the tooling, it's really hit or miss still. Um, I would advise anybody getting into it, you know, probably don't. I've wasted hours and hours and hours on this. Um, I would probably suggest to wait for the final versions of the tooling from RIM and from uh, from Adobe. You know, I would I would hold off because it is just such a pain in the ass right now.